Well, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to 2024. Thank you so much for your patience in waiting for me as I recovered from the flu. I, I did attend a lot of family parties. We had family staying with us. Unfortunately, it was inevitable. I, I feel like I have such a crappy immune system that if there's one case of COVID in the state that I'm living in or one case of the flu, I'm gonna get it. So this year was definitely no different. We went to four or five family parties. We had family staying with us and unfortunately it was inevitable. I ended up getting sick. So thank you so much for that time. I just want to start this video out with a little bit of gratitude. I want to thank all of you for subscribing to this channel and really making it what it is, commenting on videos and continuing the conversation in those comment threads. This channel has surpassed over 5,000 subscribers in a very short amount of time. If you think about it, I really just started posting more only about three to four months ago. So it's grown significantly in a hockey stick growth rate in a very short amount of time. And that wouldn't have been possible without all of you. So thank you so much for making this channel what it is. So for those of you who are trying to figure out what this channel is all about, it's not just another gear review channel. It's not just another filmmakers channel. This channel was created for scripted narrative filmmakers. For those of you who are working on feature films or TV series, this channel was made for you to provide tutorials and editing and color grading, gear reviews and sound and also in camera and grip and electric. So for those of you who are trying to figure all that out and start a studio of your own, then definitely tune in. So I want to talk about a few things before we get into this video. First and foremost, many of you probably saw the announcement regarding us being greenlit for a new TV series called Shadow Unit. We are going to continue the pre-production process for that, which will affect my publishing schedule of new content. I'll go over that, but I just want to let all of you know that I'm not going to be able to maintain the same upload cadence that I had from last year now that we've entered pre-production on Shadow Unit. Now, unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, we are being asked for every episode of season one. Now, unfortunately, and some of you may already know this, the platforms will not actually pre-buy a TV series. So you need to finance it and film it yourself, and then the platforms will look at buying it. This is the case with TV series, not the case with feature films. So platforms as well as distributors will pre-buy a feature film. So you can go to a platform, you can go to a distributor, offer them exclusivity for their region, and they'll pre-buy that film before it's made. This is unfortunately not the case with TV series. So having said that, we are continuing the pre-production process on Shadow Unit. We've started the audition process. We've gotten over 2,000 submissions for the roles on that series, and we have begun the auditioning process. We've gotten through about 90 auditions, which is another reason why I haven't really been able to dedicate the time to making videos for this channel, but I do promise you, I consider this channel to be an integral part of our studio and we will continue to develop content and upload it, just not at the frequency we were able to before. Now, whereas last year we averaged, I think three to four videos per week, we're not going to be able to maintain that this year, especially with being in pre-production for this new series. Now, what we're planning on doing is probably releasing either a video or podcast every week along with a live stream. So whereas we were trying to do all three plus a blog uh, and the community forums, we're going to definitely have to scale that back and choose between either a podcast or a video this week along with a live stream. Now I do prefer live streams of course because there's really no post-production at all required with that. There's no editing, no color grading. We just live stream and it's available for you to watch later if you can't make it. So I will continue to focus on developing content, especially when we get back on set. Now I know out of all of the video tutorials, whether it's color grading, editing, or the gear reviews, the most popular video is gonna be videos where we're actually on set filming. 
Now we will be hiring a full-time person to handle BTS on the set of Shadow Unit so all of you can get the behind the scenes footage of us filming a TV series and we will be publishing that to this channel. I promise you that is coming. Right now we're in pre-production, we're focusing on script writing. We have 10 episodes to write. So if you can imagine roughly about one minute per page is the average and what you try and guesstimate how many pages you'll need for a 46 minute episode you're looking at about 46 pages. So 10 episodes, 46 pages, we have 460 pages to write. Right now we're averaging about a month, month and a half per episode. So we are going to need to extend the pre-production period for Shadow Unit, whereas I thought I could get it done in about three months. That's not the case right now. Now I am excited to announce that we've signed with a production and distribution partner, Odyssey Motion Pictures. The principals over there, Mark Klevinoff and Louis Mandalore. Louis, you'll probably remember from my big fat Greek wedding as the brother, or for those of you who are obsessed with friends like we are, he was Joey number two and the episode where he came in as Joey's double. So we're super excited about that partnership as well as casting several other folks like Brian Sutherland, whom you probably remember from Pig, as well as Grimm. We're gonna be casting him in a lead role as well. So that's pretty much what's been going on at Night Studios over the last few months. We've been heads down on screenwriting, getting everything in place for the funding for this TV series, as well as doing auditions for the numerous roles for the cast of Shadow Unit. For those of you who are interested in auditioning, check out my Instagram page and uh, you'll find the link in my bio for the link to the audition information. Backstage has also been uh, advertising the Shadow Unit auditions on Instagram as well. So for those of you who didn't know I have an Instagram page, I do have an Instagram page. It's at Alyssa Knight. So check me out, I'm on Instagram. Out of all the social media sites that I frequent, Instagram is pretty much the number one place I hang out outside of YouTube. So if you wanna DM me uh, on Instagram, I'm available there. I'm pretty responsive. I do get a lot of messages on Instagram, unfortunately. So if you don't get a response right away, don't feel bad. Uh, but you can definitely hit me up on Instagram if you need to chat. We have several videos in post-production ready to be posted on this channel. We need to edit and color grade the cinematic lighting tutorial video we did. We invited some of the cast from Shadow Unit over and did some cinematic lighting techniques for all of you. Uh, also this video. And then Mel and I had the opportunity to interview Alicia Richards from AR Music Services. The reason we wanted to do that Behind the Lens podcast interview was because so many of you you probably have a lot of questions around music clearance, uh, copyrights regarding the use of copyrighted music. So I wanted to invite Leisha on the show and interview her because she's an expert in music clearance and music supervision. So I wanted to share that interview with all of you. Alicia's worked on several films, including Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, Scoob, and she's also worked at Sony Entertainment and Netflix. So it's a Definitely an interesting conversation that all of you should check out. I want to quickly cover the Shadow Unit series. It's going to be filmed under the SAG After New Media contract. So we haven't yet announced who that streaming partner is yet. New Media contract basically means that it's going to be distributed over streaming, but we're looking forward to announcing who that partner is going to be very soon. Okay, I want to quickly demystify the Night Studios Insider program. Several of you got confused over the newsletter sign up versus the insider forms. When you go to nightstudios.com, you'll get a pop-up that asks you to sign up for our newsletter. Definitely sign up for that. That's a way for me to communicate to all of you news and announcements that's happening around Night Studios as well as uh, productions, casting calls, that sort of thing. So definitely sign up for that. There's also the Night Studios Insider Forums. The newsletter and the Insider Forums are two completely separate things. So if you're hitting the Insider Forums and you're not able to authenticate, it's because you've only signed up for the newsletter. So make sure that you sign up for a new account on nightstudios.com or .co and sign up for the Insider Forums. Signing up for the Insider Forums, meaning creating an account, will give you access to the Insider Forums. It's not the same thing as the Insider Newsletter. So I want to quickly talk about learning through teaching. My whole career in cybersecurity for 23 years was a lot of teaching and one of the things that I did was I woke up every morning wanting to be a student. I spoke at conferences as a keynote speaker and over the 23 years I always hung my ego at the door wanting to learn new things. I knew that some 15 year old coming out of school could teach me something new. It didn't matter how long I'd worked in cybersecurity. 
And I really treat my life in filmmaking now the same way. So I'm always eager to learn from all of you. I don't want this to be that kind of channel where I'm just talking at you and imparting my knowledge on you. I want to learn from you as well. So thank you to all of you who've gone into the comments and either provided a correction to something or taught me something new. I greatly appreciate it. You know, we should all hang our ego at the door and learn something new from everyone. I've learned so much from Darren Mostyn, from Colin Kelly, from Mark Todd Osborne. There's so many great colorists out there, great editors out there, great directors out there that I continue to learn from. So that's how I want this channel to be structured. So for all of you who are continuing to participate in the comments and starting new threads in the insider forums, thank you so much because that's the environment I'm trying to foster here on this channel at Nightlight. Let's get to what this video is all about. The Deity Theos wireless microphone system. Uh, I'm actually using it right now. I love this lav system and I'm going to talk about why. Now the big major difference with this lavalier system is that it is UHF and it is not 2.4 gigahertz. So it's completely digital. We'll talk about the nuances between digital and 2.4 gigahertz with other wireless systems and why you want UHF, why you want digital when you're dealing with wireless microphone systems. So we're gonna talk about that. We'll also talk about the Zaxcom lawsuit and what that means for some of these microphone manufacturers like Rode and Deity, as well as Sennheiser and some of the others like Electrosonic. So we'll go into that and also talk about why I love this system so much and how we're going to be using it here at Night Studios. Now let's talk about one of the things that I love the most about the Theo system and the fact that it has a built-in TCXO and that stands for a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Now what that means in lay terms is that it has built-in timecode. But for those of you who have an external timecode system like the Tentacle system, which is a great system as well, but we use the TC1 from Deity here at Night Studios as many of you know. So if you don't want to use the TC1 system, you can still use your Tentacle system or any other timecode generator as well. So I want to quickly explain how timecode generators work. Timecode generators require some sort of clock source in order to maintain time. Now they do this using crystal oscillators, but the problem with crystal oscillators is that they can actually drift when temperatures change. So whether it gets too cold or too hot, that can affect its ability to maintain an accurate time signal. Now this is where TCXOs come in that have integrated temperature compensation circuitry that help alleviate those concerns. So these Deity Theo systems have built in TCXOs allowing you to maintain an accurate time code. Now the Thales system is digital, which means that it operates on the UHF band of 550 to 663 megahertz at roughly about 300 feet. Now the interesting thing about UHF is it can penetrate brick walls and doors that 2.4 gigahertz systems struggle to try and penetrate. This is why you'll get dropouts when you're recording sound from room to room or too far away from the system. Also, 2.4 gigahertz is a very crowded band. You might recognize it from your home Wi-Fi system. That's because it's the same exact thing. Not only do your home wireless access points use the 2.4 gigahertz band, but also your microwave and other wireless devices. So the fact that it operates on UHF is gonna mean a huge difference in the quality of your sound from your old system, if you're using like a Sennheiser on the 2.4 gigahertz band or other systems and moving to the UHF band. Now, what I love about the Theo system is it is a two to one mapping, meaning that the receiver has dual channel and you can send two transmitters to a single receiver. So gone are the days where you need to buy an expensive transmitter and receiver you can use two transmitters on one receiver. They've thought of everything. There are no missing cables in this box. They give you a 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRS cable in case you want to output to a camera. Now, they also include a 3.5 millimeter TRS to XLR converter so you can go directly into a sound recorder. Now, we will be doing that today and setting that up, but I just want to let you know that they include those cables in addition to the WLAV Pro mics that ship with the box. Now we did purchase the WLAV Pro Micro Dots, which is basically a smaller version of the lavalier mic for our actors on stage. We obviously don't want those microphones showing. We want them as inconspicuous as possible, which is why we bought the 
micro dots. And I think those are around $200 each. So if you don't want that and the regular size lavalier mics are fine for you, then just use the ones that are included in the kit. Now, in addition to hooking up to the Mix Pre 10, I'm also gonna show you how to do what's called gain staging. Gain staging is basically making sure that you've got both the receiver and the transmitter set at the correct gain so you're not clipping your audio. Now, speaking about clipping, I do wanna talk about 32-bit float. This does support 32-bit float recording on the transmitters and the receiver, because it doesn't have a limiter, you need to make sure that you hook that up to a sound recorder that supports 32-bit float. Now, I don't have to worry about that because the Sound Devices Mix Pre 10 does 32-bit float recording, but just know that if you are going to hook it up to an, an external device, like for example, a camera or anything else, you need to make sure it's got 32-bit float because if you are transmitting wirelessly to the receiver, the receiver does not have a built-in limiter. So you're not going to be able to recover any audio that's clipping in post if you are recording to a device that doesn't support 32-bit float recording. Now let's talk about the Zaxcom lawsuit because that is pertinent to our discussion right now about 32-bit float recording. Zaxcom has two patents issued to it that relate to simultaneous transmission and recording on a microphone system. Now it was issued one of its patents that's applicable to this in 2010 and it expires in 2030. Now Zaxcom is very litigious and it aggressively pursues any violations of its patents. I'm not gonna get into the merits about patents being over issued for overly broad things. I'm not gonna get into that. What I will say is that it does have the patent for simultaneous record and transmit in the United States. So if you are a US citizen, if you're using this in the United States, you cannot do both simultaneous transmission and recording. Now you're probably thinking, Alyssa, but my Rode Wireless Go 2 system supports transmission and record simultaneously. How's that possible? Well, Zaxcom sued them in November of last year. So they did violate Zaxcom's patent and they sued them for it. So if you have the Rode Wireless Go 2 system as well as the Wireless Pro system, those systems violate Zaxcom's patent, which they got sued for. Now, Zaxcom did also sue Electrosonic. So for those of you who have those expensive high-end Electrosonic systems, they also violated Zaxcom's patent, got sued for it in 2019. Now, Zaxcom did actually end up in a federal appeals court with Electrosonics, and Electrosonics ultimately won an appeals court in 2022. So it's a very polarized, very sticky situation with the Zaxcom patent, but they do aggressively pursue anyone violating their transmission and record functionality that they got issued a patent for so something to think about I'm just interested in trivial stuff like that I, I want to know more about it I want to take it apart and I'm also going to be doing a new video on the red patent and its patent that it holds on in-camera recording of raw and compression within camera systems so that's a very interesting topic as well that I want to talk about now in 2021 the BPTRX was allowed to transmit and record simultaneously because Deity signed a license agreement with Zaxcom for that. Now, clearly they didn't do that for their new Theo system, but uh, that's another reason why there was a delay in the release of the Theos from my understanding is dealing with this record and transmit issue and having a separate US system for people that are filming in the United States. Now, if you live outside the United States, you're filming outside the US, you can simultaneously record and transmit if you're outside the US. But if you're within the United States or you're filming within the United States, you can only use that US model. So that pretty much wraps up the whole Deity Zaxcom conversation. Let's put that to bed. I want to move on to some other things. Now, there are some folks on YouTube that I follow that are amazing in the audio world that I've learned a lot from. Now, just because I follow them, just because I respect them, doesn't mean I'm always going to agree with them. I may say some things on this channel that you may not agree with either. That's okay. Disagreements happen. Let's, let's talk through it. Let's have some discourse on it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not gonna do what everyone thinks I'm gonna do. Flip out, man. I do want to address something that's being said by some YouTubers regarding the Thales system. There have been some videos talking about the fact that they consider this to be a prosumer product. Now, I want to take that apart for a minute. 
I use the Ubiquiti Unify system throughout my house. Now, there are corporations, large campuses that use Ubiquiti equipment for wireless networking, and I don't consider that device, that product, that company to be prosumer. I consider anyone who buys it to be prosumer. I want to extrapolate those two things because to me they're not one and the same. Just because you're using Cisco equipment in your house doesn't mean Cisco is prosumer equipment. The person is a prosumer, professional consumer. The person is a prosumer, not the product. So I think it's wholly inaccurate and false to refer to the Theo system as a prosumer product. We're going to be using these on the sets of Night Studios for a TV series, okay? I don't consider the Theo system to be prosumer. I consider myself to be a prosumer, but not the system. Now, for those of you who got let down and got your feelings hurt because you've seen those same videos, we're in the same ballpark, we're in the same camp. I subscribe to the same school of thought that you do. I do not believe that the Theo system is a prosumer system. Just because it has a dual channel receiver, just like the DJI uh, mics and the Rode Wireless Go mics, just because those have a dual channel receiver and you can transmit from two simultaneous transmitters, doesn't mean that I consider those to be in the same product class. In my opinion, the Deity Theo system falls within the product categories of the Electrosonics DSR DBSM and the A20 from Sound Devices. Now the Sound Devices system gives you one transmitter and one receiver for roughly about $5,000 and the Electrosonics system gives you one transmitter and one receiver for about $7,300, both with a dual channel receiver. So just because the Theos is only about $1,090, for retail doesn't mean, in my opinion, that you need to push it to the consumer product category of the DJI and the Rode Wireless. This just is an indicator to me that we're seeing more and more democratization happening within the professional line of cinema equipment. So that wraps it up for the intro for this video. We'll go ahead and move over into Studio A and I'll start the unboxing of the Theo system. Okay, so we are at the unboxing of the Theo system. We did purchase two of the WLAV Micro 3mm lavalier mics. The reason why we bought the micros is, again, because we're a production company and we work in scripted narrative filmmaking, you don't want to be able to see the lavalier mic on the talent. So you want that hidden as much as possible. The micro dots will definitely help in that and not creating such a bulge on their uh, t-shirt or whatever clothing they're wearing. So we did get beige. You have two options, either beige or black. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the unboxing. Again, I have unboxed this already, so no surprise there, but we needed to use it and I couldn't keep it unboxed any longer. As you can tell, I'm wearing completely different clothes. That's because it's been like two months since I've filmed the first part of this video. So yeah, it's been that busy. I also have my Orca bag here, which is my sound mixer bag for production sound mixing. And I have my Mix Pre 10 in here. I will be hooking the receiver up to the Mix Pre 10 and showing all of you how to do that, as well as what's called gain staging. And that's just making sure that every hop along the way in your audio chain is configured properly where you're not introducing distortion or anything like that. So I'll walk you through what's called line level if you're outputting to a sound recorder like the Mix Pre 10, or if you're going into a DSLR camera, I'll walk you through the settings for that as well. So because the receiver is dual channel, it has two different outputs. There's RX1 and RX1 plus RX2. RX1 is what you're going to be using if you're going to a sound recorder like we are. If you're going to be hooking the receiver up directly to a DSLR camera or any kind of 3.5 millimeter jack, you're gonna be using the RX1 plus RX2 output. And that basically just takes both of the channels and outputs them so you get both sides of the conversation. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the unboxing. I'm gonna walk you through the different antenna types based on their color code. So receiver and two transmitters, and then your different antenna types. Now, again, I did open this, so these are properly individually wrapped. 
and you do have different color combinations depending on the antenna type. So for the red antennas, and it is labeled on the antenna in case you need a reminder when you're on set, you don't want to bring the instructions with you or Google it, uh, the reds are 550 to 608 megahertz. My advice is start with one color, perform a scan, and if it's really busy, go ahead and move to the next color. So I've been sticking with red, haven't had any problems with that, at least here in Las Vegas and Summerlin. For yellow, this is going to be 614 to 663 megahertz. So that's yellow and then blue. Those out. We got the blues and those are 902 to 928 megahertz. So again, depending on how busy your area is, what kind of devices are in the area, as I mentioned in the earlier part of this video, this is a UHF system versus 2.4 gigahertz. So it is definitely going to be less crowded, but you may find some devices on the UHF band. So that's not like you're going to be the only one on it, depending on your area. So these are the transmitters and receivers. Again, you have your antenna hookup. So I'll go ahead and use red and we'll hook that up. Once you have that in, the other port is obviously for the lavalier mic. You have a belt clip on here. And then to get access to all the buttons, the power buttons, that sort of thing, it's going to be in the battery door. Now, I put Duracell batteries in here only because in our last filming, the batteries that came with Deity actually died. So we're recharging those and I just went ahead and put some brand new Duracells in here. So you've got your power button and then you have your menu button. We'll go ahead and turn it on. It's going to load up and then what you're going to do is within the frequency menu, you're just going to go ahead and put it in pairing mode when you're ready to pair it with the receiver after performing a scan. Now I will show you that, but for now I'll go ahead and just turn this off. You really don't want the transmitters on when you're performing a scan or any really any radio equipment near you when you're performing a scan. So this is the other transmitter. So we'll go ahead and put a red antenna on this. I won't put the lavaliers in yet because I do want to open the WLAV Pros. So same thing, battery door and all your buttons. And then you have your receiver. Now, again, because it is a dual channel receiver, you do have two antennas on the receiver. Let's go ahead and put those in. And that is your remaining red antenna. Right. Now you're probably wondering what the two other ports are on this receiver. That is for your TRS cables. Now this is what I love about Deity. They do give you all the cables that you're going to need and they are color-coded in yellow. <laughs> so I do appreciate that. Branding. These are your Deity stickers, service warranty. I think those are QR codes to service manuals, that sort of thing. So I won't open that. Just put that to the side. All right, so these are your Deity batteries. They do give you enough batteries for the receiver and transmitters. I'm not sure where the other two Deity batteries are. Maybe they're in the receiver. Nope, those are Duracells. Uh, they may be in the charger. I don't know where they ran off to. So these are your individual cables that you'll get with the, the package. Uh, this is just your basic TRS to TRS. So if you're gonna be connecting the receiver to a DSLR camera, you would use this cable. And then I, I greatly appreciated the fact that they gave you two TRS to XLR cables. Now, for those of you, again, who follow this channel, know that it is a channel meant for scripted narrative filmmakers. So in scripted narrative, you've got a sound recorder. You don't ever use the microphone on your camera, obviously. So because of that, we're always going to a sound recorder. These are the two most uh, common cables you'll probably be using if you're a scripted narrative filmmaker or even documentary filmmaker. It does matter. It just, you know, anything outside of creating YouTube videos or vlogs, you're typically going to a sound recorder. All right, and let's see. So we have the TRS to XLR, I'll set those aside. 
Now, these are the microphones that came with the system. They're not bad. They're actually great microphones. As a matter of fact, the screen test that we did recently, as many of you know, we are in pre-production on a new series called Shadow Unit, and we've been doing screen tests with some of the actors during the casting uh, and auditions. So we did have the actress who's playing one of the roles in the series come over and do a screen test. We've been using that, as, as well as Christopher Cinquemani, as many of you know, is also going to be on the cast. We use these microphones. They're great mics. I haven't had any problems with them. Again, just wanting to grab the smaller microphone with the WLAV micro dots. All right, so I'm going to leave these in here. I'm not going to hook them up because we're not going to be using them anymore. So I don't know about any of you, if, if any of you purchased this, but one thing is for some reason, this doesn't stick very well. It just always falls off. It's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back. Make that all nice and pretty. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the unboxing of the microphones. All right. So we'll open both mics. Oh, thank you. Mel is my assistant today. I haven't opened these yet, so this is my first time seeing it with all of you. They give you a really nice case for this. I am pleasantly surprised. I've not seen this yet. Looks like just some warranty stuff. I don't know why you would need an instruction manual for a microphone for a lavalier mic, but okay. So you get some instructions as well. Let's open this baby up. I, I love this packaging. Packaging, packaging. Actually, these are great. I don't know if any of you have used these before, but I'll do a video on ways to conceal a lavalier mic under your talent's clothing for both women and men. And because there's different ways you can do it. And one of the things that I'll create is what's called a moleskin sandwich. And what you do is you take two pieces of moleskin and you wrap them around the head of the lavalier mic and it basically protects the mic from shirt rustle. It's not perfect, but it's one of the ways that I've been concealing the mic. Look how small that, look how small that is. That's really tiny. If you compare that, let's compare it to the other microphone. So if you compare the size of these two microphones, look at that. Look at that difference. That is a huge difference between the two microphone heads. So yeah, I definitely think it's worth the money. So if any of you are wondering if you should spend the extra money on the micro dots, I would do that. So it looks like it comes with a little clip, right? We'll most likely not ever use that, but and that will go ahead and plug right into the transmitter. These are just little microphone concealers that you can use to stick the microphone to the sh sh uh, clothing of the talent. Looks like we've got little, little wind screens for the microphones too as well. It's interesting. We'll most likely never use that either. And it looks like we also have some furries here for wind, which is nice. That's cool. They give you, they give you quite a lot of stuff. Now, here's an interesting, I've never seen this before, but it looks like they give you medical tape. Medical tape is your sound mixer's best friend. You can also use medical tape to tape this to your talent skin. And I'll actually put this over the moleskin sandwich. I think out of all of the different materials that I've used over the years in uh, putting microphones on talent, Moleskin is probably my favorite. I, I've had the best results with Moleskin. And what I'll do is I'll do the Moleskin sandwich and then just put this medical tape over it. But I've never seen a lavalier mic come with that. So that's really cool that they included that. I love how Dady just thinks of everything. So, all right, so we will go ahead and pull this out. I'll leave that out. All right, now 
let's go ahead and connect the TRS to XLR cables to the receiver. Let me get that done. I'm gonna show you how this is done, but I'm not going to actually leave it connected. The reason why is I already have TRS to XLR cables that I purchased prior. Uh, so this will just go like this, and then you've got your second one that goes here. Okay, that's all you do, and then you connect both of these to your sound recorder. Okay, that's all you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these again. I've already got TRS to XLR on my sound devices. So I'm going to move these over here. All right, so let's go ahead and just connect one of the microphones now. I'll use the microphone that came with the system. Let me go ahead and walk you through the gain staging. And just your first time use. All right, so let's go ahead and open these doors. Now, when you, one of the things that I learned about the system is when you perform a scan, it's gonna give you a short period of time to turn on your transmitter and put it in pairing mode, after which once that happens, it times out. So if you can't get to that pairing mode fast enough, uh, you need to go back into the, the frequency menu and click on it and then you can go into pairing, but just an FYI, you need to be ready for that. So I'm going to go ahead and hold both of them in my hands. Turn it on. You do need to hold it down for a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and click on the menu button. I'm going to click frequency, and then I'm going to click scan. As you can see here, it's scanning my local area for anything that might be within the frequency of 550 to 608. Looks like we have something over there. And then as soon as this is done, I'm gonna quickly turn on my transmitter. I'm gonna say yes. And then it says to put it in pairing mode. And I'm gonna now quickly set my, turn on my second transmitter and put this in pairing mode. Now I have seen this before where this will say success and this one either doesn't or will later, but it does happen. Uh, you just wanna try and let it finish. If it, it still doesn't say success on the transmitter, go ahead and just go back into the menu system, click on RX1 and uh, RX2, okay? And then depending on which transmitter didn't succeed. So if it was the second, uh, if it was the second channel that didn't pair, go ahead and click RX2, click the OK button, and then get your second transmitter and put it in pairing mode and it should pair on your second attempt. The only thing that you need to make sure of, obviously, is making sure that you don't hit RX1 and then put this in pairing mode because your two transmitters will then be on the same channel. You do not want to do that. That will be a big mistake. So here you can see from the red battery signal uh, symbol that the battery is quite low. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go ahead and turn everything off. All right, so that's how you scan and set up your transmitters. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is hook up the receiver to the Mix Pre 10. One of the things you'll notice is on each individual cable coming out of the Mix Pre, I've used the label maker to label the port numbers. This will save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. I wish I would have done this on day one. It really helped me on set, especially when you're moving really quickly and you're just trying to get all of your talent ready and sound working and all of the receivers synced up with the transmitters and you're trying to find which cable goes where. Take a label maker, label your, your cables. It will save you so much time, heartache, and pain. 
All right, so I have one and two labeled here. I've pulled those out of the old Sennheiser receivers, and I'm going to go ahead and put those right into the trans, the receiver for the Theo system. So we have one and we have two. All right. So one and two are connected to the Theos receiver. I'll put that on the side and we will go ahead and walk through the setup on the mobile app. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and set up the transmitter and receiver on the iPad. What I love about Deity is their Citus Link app. They have a Citus Audio app and that is for the TC1, which is their timecode system, as well as the Theo system. So it's gonna live right alongside your other TC1s. So here you can see the DBTX, DBTX, and D2RX. So because they're all off, they're grayed out. So I will go ahead and delete each device. I'm gonna leave those, those are the TC1s for the different camera systems. Ali is my TC1 connected to my Mix Pre 10. Mel, that one is labeled Mel because it's Melissa's, connected to her Aerie, and then Nick is our old camera operator uh, that's connected to the V-Raptor. So we can go ahead and get these configured and set up. I'm going to add the receiver first. Hopefully the batteries last. Adding the receiver and the transmitters to the mobile app is actually just as simple as adding the Aperture lighting equipment because Aperture actually owns Deity. So that is the reason for the fact that Citus and Citus Link Audio are two similar apps that are owned by the same company. It's owned by Aperture. So to do that, just like on the lights, you're just gonna go to Bluetooth and do a Bluetooth reset. So I'm gonna go to BT on the receiver. I'm gonna hit reset and I'm gonna hit yes, and then I'm just gonna hit the plus sign, and you can see the D2Rx has already showed up. Now I'm gonna hit set up. And it looks like pairing failed, so let's try that again. Okay, so this time it said pairing successful. All right, we have our D2RX right there. I'm thinking that battery probably has, that almost dead battery has a lot to do with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the first transmitter. I will walk you through the configuration on that, but let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter. Frequency, oops. I'm gonna go down to BT. And go to reset. I'm gonna hit add, and then you see the DBTX shows up immediately. Pairing successful. And then we have our transmitter on there. That's another thing that I love about this system is gone are the days where I have to walk up to the talent, ask for their belt pack back, have to do configurations on the device, I can actually do it right here within the mobile app, which is what I love. One of the things that I love about this system. All right, so that's set up. Now let's do the final transmitter. And we're gonna go down to by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but TC Sync, yes, it actually has built-in timecode sync, which I love as well. So many things to love about this system. All right, let's go to BT and then reset. We'll reset that Bluetooth. I'll go ahead and hit plus and you'll see it show up. And then I can hit set up. Pairing successful. And now you can see all of the systems are online and you can see that the time code on both of the transmitters are exactly the same. And we can go ahead and click on the D2RX and you can see both channels here, channel 515, 584.9. And what you're gonna wanna do is set the output type. And this is where I talked earlier about RX1 and RX1 plus RX2. If you are going to a recorder like we are, you want to go ahead and make sure that that's set to RX1 on output 1 and RX2 on output 2. 
if you are going to a DSLR camera, it's RX1 plus RX2. All right. But again, because we're going to record it, we're going to leave that there. Now, you're probably wondering about the line level output that's set to zero decibels. That's the setting that you want for line level. So if you are going to a sound recorder, you're going to want to make sure you set that to zero decibels. Then you're going to plug a lavalier into your transmitter. You're going to set the output to 15 decibels and you're going to want to aim for somewhere around negative 12 decibels on your final output. So go to your sound recorder, whether it's your Mix Pre 10, Mix Pre, whatever, whatever sound recorder it is and monitor it, look at the levels, make sure that the talent's voice are hitting somewhere around minus 12 dB. That's it for the unboxing and setup of the Deity Theos system. Again, I love the system. Uh, definitely do not agree with the YouTubers out there who are saying that this system is a prosumer system just because it's cheaper than comparable systems that are out there by thousands of dollars. We are, take it from us, our studio is switching from expensive Sennheiser lavalier mics to these. And I've, I've listened to the quality from the Sennheisers that we had before, which were the GWs and the EWs. And this system, it's so much better on the sound quality will never be switching back. Well, hopefully the introduction wasn't too long, but those chapters can help you skip around directly to this part. But thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. For those of you who are still trying to figure out what makes this channel different, we are in support of the Scripted Narrative Filmmaker. We do gear reviews, post-production tutorials, like color grading and editing. And until we see each other again, make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button, and don't forget to sign up for the Night Studios Insider Forums at our website at nightstudios.com. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Tell all of my friends that I'm a coming to. I'm coming far to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming far to carry me. to carry me home.